hello everyone welcome to this video in this video I want to cover how to add messages to an Azure storage queue using functions uh, this topic is important if you're studying for definitely is a 303 or 304 exam uh, it's definitely covered so what we're gonna do we're gonna follow this particular official Microsoft documentation and if you search for um, Azure function app quick start you should get to this page you probably land up end up uh, somewhere in this and then just uh, come to this page and as a matter of fact I want to give you this link as part of the video that I'm creating right now okay now before you do this you gotta have a Azure app instance that should should be running or that you should have the function already available to you so if you look at the prerequisite you actually got to do and finish up this lab where you have to create a for function app or your first function app in the Azure portal so let's get let's do that real quick and I'm gonna use the nomenclature or whatever uh, they are following I'm gonna use that like the suggested values and name and the way we are configuring I'm going to use these specifications so the way you create function app is is same as anything else that you create within Azure so I'm going to search for function app so once I have the function app it's going to give this view which is very familiar I'm going to create add once I create add I'm going to create a new resource group and as per the lab specification I'm going to use my resource group okay and function app is just has to be a globally unique name so I'm just gonna say test app 0987 okay and then runtime step I'm gonna use let's see runtime step is preferred language use dot net code dot net core for C sharp so I'm just gonna use dot net core and central US is fine hosting hosting we are gonna use consumption based okay and uh, the storage account I'm just gonna create a new one operating system windows is fine uh, plan is consumption based or serverless okay next go to monitoring I'm just gonna create a new application inside go to tags and review and create and that should create a sample container where we can now deploy some applications or functions okay so let's go back over here uh, code global unique person number prefer region then storage account we are creating a new we have chosen windows and serverless consumption plan we have chosen that and monitoring we have chosen a new application inside instance for this one and we are in this stage and we're waiting for this screen to appear as soon as it appears we're gonna create a HTTP trigger okay so it looks like the deployment is almost done uh, it's got whole bunch of things already deployed for us so let's review keep reviewing what we need to do once this is done uh, we're gonna keep the testing the function uh, we have done that in the previous or we can quickly test the function as a matter of fact and as soon as we are done uh, we come back to this section which is the main thing that I wanted to complete in this lab where we're gonna add the miss add messages to an Azure storage queue using functions okay so now it's all done so if you go to this resource it's a function app within this there's nothing running there's no function so if you go down to the functions and then function there's nothing there so let's add a HTTP trigger okay HTTP trigger and HTTP trigger one is just fine I'm gonna use anonymous authorization level and I'm just gonna create the function okay so once I create the function it's gonna show up in here and uh, I'm gonna go to code and test and in this one I'm gonna do a very quick testing I'm gonna run test 
post method is fine key is fine and here I'm gonna say Ankan and then I'm gonna say run and it says it's connected and here is the HTTP response from the lab from from this particular code and here is the log and if you look at the code real quick what it's doing uh, it's really processing your HTTP request and then it's printing to this particular log and over here you are sending a post parameter which is a name that's where I pass my name and then here it's processing the query and here in this function it's coming up with this hello name this HTTP triggered function executed successfully once we have all of that we are returning that uh, in the response message and that's what we have seen okay so with that let's go to this lab here so now we have the prerequisites done here what we want to do so let's come back to the lab if you look at the integration integration so now we have a trigger which is the HTTP trigger one but I don't have any integration I don't have any inputs any outputs okay so if you come come back over here adding an input binding and adding an output binding is what we're gonna do so we can use the portal UI to add a queue storage output binding to the function you created earlier okay this binding makes it possible to write minimal code to create a message in a queue you don't have to write code for tasks such as opening the storage connection, creating a queue, or getting reference queue. It's very, very simple. The Azure function runtime and queue output binding takes care of all the code in the background. So you don't have to do anything much at all. So what we do here, we're gonna configure the output here. Okay. So if you click on the output and we're gonna select a uh, Q storage binding type so let's come back over here so we are at the right spot so here we're gonna add an output and binding type you have so many different options okay you can bind it with the blob cosmos event hub but this time we're gonna stick to a Q storage and what else do we need to do as your Q storage we have message parameter name output Q item output queue item is good queue name is out queue storage account connection azure web job storage so let's see yeah they all look good okay output uh, message parameter name is fine the name of the binding parameter queue name the name of the queue to connect to your your storage account and as your storage account by default this is picking picking up you can use the storage account connection already being used by your function app or create a new one you can create a new one as well here we can click ok so if I click ok now you see that it says I have an output binding with the Azure queue storage and here is the name of it okay let's come back over here now we need to add a little bit of code that uses the output binding okay so we gotta go back to our function and what we need to do in the code test display the function code and editor update the function code depending on your function so add this parameter to the method signature as shown in the following example so it's a C sharp code so here is your code that we have already seen in the body of the function just before the return statements we want to add this so let's copy this one output item dot add name passed to the function so we want every time the function is run we want to create a message and we change the message to the to the message queue so come back over here so go to the code and test okay uh, and if this is your the main function body and here is the return statement so before we return anything let's add the code that we need so this is output queue item remember this is what we have used so in that particular Azure queue storage we are adding 
this particular message as as many times as this code is running or this this function is being called okay then I'm going to save this okay and I'm going to go back over here so we have saved the now we need to taste the function again so request vary name value appears in the queue message that is created when the function is invoked so come back over here uh, taste and run I'm not going to change anything uh, okay this is Anka. this is also fine so just click run and let's see if uh, if everything is good okay this gives me an error right now uh, so I need to spend just a second to debug what went wrong all right everyone we have figured out the error that I had so all you need to do okay so come over here you need to add the additional uh, parameter that you want to pass in and it should be I collect a string output Q item that's what we have configured for our storage account and then what you need to do you need to add this particular line output Q item dot add it needs to be right before the return statement so here we are passing and processing the response message we are giving this name parameter so it's going to give us uh, this result to the logger and it's also going to create a queue message item in our uh, Azure queue storage before it returns uh, the output to the log okay so now if you and if you the instructions are really there you just have to pay a little bit more attention so you need to go ahead and modify this uh, signature of your public static keep everything over here come back down get this line and put it right before your return statement and that should do it so now if I click on uh, taste and run I go to the input and I'm not changing anything okay so I'm just hit run and uh, the output should say that it's now 200 okay and again this trigger uh, function was executed successfully so how do you know that it's created a message for us to do that uh, what you can do you can find the storage account connected to Azure web job storage so we'll go to the function configuration and under application settings select Azure web job storage so let's go to app service configuration so let's see app services uh, come back over here function app function app uh, then let's go to where is my configuration so let's see if we have the storage account listed over here and in this uh, do I have anything that I as your web job storage hidden value click to show is this the one that I need okay let's see come back over here uh, under function app app service configuration so let's go function app need to get this uh, UI is probably has changed just a little let me spend a second here now we are actually at the right right spot so function app configuration so as your web job storage is where you need to click on and if you click on this is it's telling you that this is the name of your service and here is the value in under account name it's telling you this is your account name and account key. I'm just going to copy this whole thing right now and put it in here someplace. And so I know this is my storage account, right? So this is what we need. And then let's go back and examine the output queue in the resource group that you function app. Select the storage account that you're using. And under queue service, select queue. So let's go back over here and I can directly search for that account, okay? And here is the storage account I can click on that one and here uh, this storage account I should have the queues so let's click on the queues 
and see what we have here is the out queue and click on the out queue and look at that so we have executed our function twice and the name passed to the function is on so let's just to verify that it's working completely let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna open another um, another tab real quick and what I want to do I want to run that function one more time so let's go to the function and uh, let's go to the functions for function app is the container function is where you have the functions here is my HTTP trigger that we have created where it's creating and here is the code um, what we will do we'll do do the testing in two different ways here uh, we're gonna do the test run and here I'll say within portal and I hit run okay so that's is connected uh, and it says everything work, well, worked well I'm gonna click this one get the function URL okay and then I'm gonna put it over here and I'm gonna pass a name parameter uh, name is from web okay so I'm gonna copy this one as well go somewhere over here and try to trigger this and at least from here it worked fine so now I'm gonna go back over to my storage account and if I refresh you better see two different new messages in the queue right and there we are okay from from portal and from web and here is the iteration time expiration time and all of that information that's available over here so what we have demonstrated in this particular video is how you create the HTTP trigger and how you bind that trigger with a output queue and you can do all kinds of stuff so just do some practice and have fun with it try some some real problem solving type activity if you have any if you can think of and that should get you started with uh, Azure functions and how to bind them with your storage account uh, with that if you like the video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and leave your valuable comments so I can improve the way I'm doing these videos if you're studying for the exam good luck have a great day